Okay, now we're, we're shifting gears a little bit from the transformations to the factorizations content of chapter five. Uh, this, this particular section just is a little synopsis of what we've done with matrix factorizations and what we're about to do in the remainder of the chapter. Uh, we've seen in chapter three, the following factorizations. Uh, and I've given you the context in which these were done. When I say general matrices, and there's, there's no conditions on the matrix, it doesn't have to be square in particular. Uh, and sometimes there are some uh, constraints on these matrices. Uh, we saw a full rank factorization. That's when we wrote a matrix uh, A is L times R. L was full column rank and R was full row rank. Uh, we encountered that in section 3.3. Any L matrix, we could find a full rank factorization. Uh, diagonal or similar canonical factorization uh, for diagonalizable matrices. So there were some constraints on the diagonalizability and that was a, a bit of a story. Uh, it was in section 3.8. That was the very lengthy section on eigenvalues. Uh, the, the ultimate punchline was we were dealing with a square matrix and the eigenvalues all had to have, one way to say it is the same geometric multiplicity as they had algebraic multiplicity. So diagonalizable is a, quite a, a loaded term. There's a bit in terms of uh, hypotheses and what a matrix has to satisfy for that. Uh, orthogonally similar factorizations, we did for symmetric matrices. Symmetric matrices have to be square matrices, by the way, uh, section 3.8. Singular value decomposition. Uh, we showed that every matrix has a singular value decomposition. As explained in section 3.8, we've got a section upcoming on singular value decomposition that really just goes back and quotes that result from, from the section on eigen analysis. Uh, the square root factorization. We were able to find a matrix such that when squared gives matrix A, provided matrix A was a non-negative definite matrix also eigenvalues, eigenanalysis section. And we'll see some new stuff in this section. We'll see the following decompositions in, uh, in this chapter. LU factorization and LDU factorization. This will apply to non-singular definite matrices and some others. The D is a diagonal matrix that's been stuck between the L and U. Possibly you saw LU factorization in linear algebra. It's certainly, at the level of a linear algebra class. I've got notes posted on it. I never have time to cover them in a sophomore linear algebra class though, but it's at that level. We'll actually do some numerical examples uh, in section 5.6 on that. Uh, QR factorization, something that can be done for general matrices, no hypotheses on that. And Cholesky factorization for non-negative definite matrices in section 5.9. Uh, as mentioned when we first started chapter five, why you want to do this factorization at all? To simplify something, you want to diagonalize a matrix uh, so that it's easy to raise to powers. I'm no numerical person, but I'm sure there's numerical reasons to want to take matrices and re represent them in these other uh, ways. That is to factor them and write them as products of certain types of special matrices to simplify what could be some very nightmarish computations. And that's it uh, for section 5.6. I'm sorry, section 5.5. Uh, I like this section. So uh, I'll see you shortly in section 5.6.